Okay, uh, good evening to all our dear audiences. We are here at Richard Kachingwe Police Station uh, in Kabwata. This is where one of our members, uh, Thompson Piri, has been detained for the last 13 days. Uh, after a big fight with our lawyers, I think our lawyers went to court and obtained a date for court uh, for habeas corpus hearing. We have seen the police quickly release him on uh, some charge. So I'm here with various leaders, members of the Central Committee, uh, members of Parliament, and the leader of, our oppos of the opposition in Parliament, Honorable Brian Mundubile, is just going to speak to this matter. We are glad that Thompson has finally been released after almost 14 days. Honorable Mundubile, just give you a reflection over this and the other case because we have other bloggers that were earlier picked and one was um, picked up yesterday, Rizwan Patel from Petauke. And you know, my case, you are aware about it and that of Andy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, you say good evening to all countrymen and women. Yes, on one hand, we are very happy that uh, Thompson uh, theory is finally out. Uh, by way of background, uh, most of you would remember that uh, he was picked up together with another blogger by the, na by the name of uh, Andy Luchinde, uh, who was also detained for a couple of days uh, before he was uh, released. Uh, Comrade Imano Mwamba was also uh, uh, you know, arrested alongside uh, Andy and Thompson. And now we have uh, one more gentleman, Rizwan Patel, who was picked up from Chipata. From Petauke. Oh, from Petauke, rather. Mm. Uh, you know, up to now, we are not sure where he's being detained. We've been running up and down uh, since morning because in the case of uh, Thompson, he's been held for the past 13 days. 13 days. And yet, uh, President Akainde Hichilema has repeatedly said, you know, he will govern this country uh, using the rule of law. Now, this gentleman has been tortured. Uh, you know, by keeping him in um, in custody for two weeks, you know, without being taken to court, and our lawyers uh, have been uh, uh, fighting day and night to the extent that uh, they ended up going to court, you know, to obtain an order of court uh, through a habeas corpus, which they presented to the police. They, even then, the police uh, had the audacity to defy an order of court. They ignored, you know, the order of court and did not even come to to. They did not bring or present the suspect um, uh, to court. We uh, are just surprised. We're called that uh, he's now been released. So it's very clear that um, we are in a country where the police can ignore the courts with impunity. Court orders no longer matter in this dispensation. It's very, very unfortunate. And uh, countrymen and women, I think uh, this is a major source of concern. Where are we going to if the people that are supposed to administer justice, because the police are part of the justice system, can ignore uh, court orders, uh, like the case is in the case of uh, uh, Thompson. Yeah, so we've been reading reports, uh, Comrade Wamba. I think there's a report by the U.S. that mm. talked about uh, the, the decline in the human rights record in Zambia. He talked about uh, torture. Yeah. He talked about arbitrary arrests, prolonged detentions, and others. I was reading in, I was reading earlier in the paper where some minister was reacting, uh, you know, disputing uh, the contents of that particular report. But here's an example. Mm -hmm. Thompson has been detained for 13 days. You know, he's been charged now. He's been charged with forgery and publication of documents. After 13 days of uh, you know being being incarcerated, so it is indeed very sad that uh, our country has declined to these very low levels, and uh, we've continued talking. I hope now that the Americans, who are friends of this government, now that they've published the report, I hope that the president, as uh, you know, he comes back from globe trotting, he will now sit down to look at the report that his friends have published and maybe act on it. In that, in which case we expect to not see cases of, um, uh, you know, Thompson being incarcerated for 13 days. Yeah, so it is very, very sad indeed. And uh, Zambians should uh, wake up and not be told uh, 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 the falsehoods about how 
this government is governing according to the rule of law. So the report by the U.S. government uh, actually left out a number of things, bad as it is. Uh, but of course, we are glad that it pointed out the various human rights violations, uh, which we're witnessing every day. The arrests, the arbitrary arrests, the torture. We never got such reports in the previous, in the recent past, about people being tortured. Look at the number of arrests that have happened the past six months. It's well documented. If somebody wanted to check, somebody could go around these police stations and check how many arrests. Definitely there's something wrong. These are, this is not a normal occurrence. Uh, this is just as a result of uh, political uh, persecution. So as members of parliament, uh, start speaking in my capacity as leader of opposition, we are going to fight on to ensure that we liberate Zambians. We swore to defend the constitution. Members of parliament are ready to even lay their lives in defense of our constitutional democracy. Because at the rate that we are going, if we do not check the activities of President Laka and the Hichilema and the EPND government, then definitely, you know, this country will be nothing to talk about. I just thought I could make a comment. And uh, Thompson, yeah, we're very sorry that, uh, you know, you, you find yourselves, yourself in these circumstances. Yeah, we have a very bad government now, a, a government that is ready to torture its own citizens. You're just a victim. Yeah. You're a yeah. victim because you're exercising your constitutional right or belonging to a political party of your choice. That is the reason why you're being punished. That should not be the case. You're very young to have been put through, you know, this amount of torture. So we are terribly sorry that you had to go through this. Yeah. You are a man and you have to fight on. Yeah, the constitution protects your rights. You've got a right to belong to any party that you want to belong to. Yeah. And to express let, yourself. And to express yourself. Mm. Yeah. In fact, there's a matter that, uh, you know, uh, has since been brought to the attention of the party where I was detained at uh, Emmersdale Police. I found four young people. Their crime is that they belong to Patriotic Front. Mm. They were rounded up in a group of 30 by an operation in January, February, led by the police and UPND. Mm. And of these 30, uh, four remain detained since February. Oh. They've been detained at Emmersdale Police for the last six months. The Human they Rights have, Commission is aware about They that? have not appeared in court. Yeah. They have not appeared anywhere. They've been in that small cell for the last six months. Honorable George Sanga and um, Honorable Shakafuso have since taken interest and we are trying to see how we can pursue that. And I agree with you, the US report talking about, about arbitrary killings, arbitrary arrests. Some people were challenging how the US could write such a strong report. The reporters cited cases that occurred in 2022. They have named the victims, the places, and the identities. So people should take interest that this government that touts itself, that is promoting uh, freedoms, rights, and freedom, is not as uh, demonstrated by by that report. But because when you and I speak about it, they think we are just PF oh, yes, yes. and politicking. Yes. But here is a credible, uh, verified international report. Because the U.S., wherever they give money, they also follow up on the delivery of human rights. And it's in that light that they do such reports. I don't yeah, know if Honorable George Sanders has any... Yeah, just, just before he comes in, I, I thought I could make one quick comment. Uh, most of the suspects that we have spoken to yes. uh, have brought to light one very important factor. Uh, the reason why uh, we have... Uh, this torture and uh, even this prolonged uh, detention. Some of the people that are parading themselves as policemen are actually UPND cadres who are interviewing the suspects. Yeah. Uh, most of the suspects that we have talked to have been able to identify the people who are coming in as plain clothed policemen. These are just cadres. You know, uh, these are people who are not employed as policemen. People who are uh, not supposed to save as policemen. These are UPND cadres known by our people. Remember that uh, some of the suspects in these police cells are people that we know. And they know each other with these uh, cadres who are coming in, uh, you know, to masquerade as, um, as police. So this is uh, how, how uh, bad the situation has become in the police. So we have a collapsed justice system. Because now even the people that are out there, uh, uh, you know, administering justice, are just people from the street. 
when you talk about uh, uh, the, 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 the collapse of the rule of law, that's exactly what we are talking about. So, Comrade Mwamba, some of the problems that we're facing in this system is that uh, cadres have taken full charge. Previously, people complained about cadres in markets and bus stations. So we have now cadres, UPND cadres, in the police torturing our people, as you know was uh, espoused in the American report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leader of Opposition. Um, oh, there we, are. we find ourselves all the time in very unfair circumstances, you know, in a country where there was a change of regime, only understanding by the people that the, the Patriotic Front, you know, was not a democratic party. The Patriotic Front had, you know, furthered the interests of the cadres ahead of the interests of the citizens. And lo and behold, where we are standing here, is another demonstration, like I said last week, that if anybody had any doubts in this country, that we have reached a stage where we can describe Zambia as a police state. What we witness even today, like we witnessed last Friday on the occasion of getting uh, Ambassador Mamba released, is testimony to the fact that there's no democracy in this country. How can you explain, you know, detaining a citizen, a youth, for 13 days without charging him? How can you explain having a youth like uh, Thompson Peary being interrogated in the absence of his lawyers, even when his lawyers had said, please, when you want to interrogate our client, call us, we'll be available. They have been moving him from one place to another. This is only a holding cell where we came to have him released. But they've been pulling him from one place to the another. If he's not at force headquarters, he's at an, an undisclosed location where the police are interrogating him with a view to finding out information which he doesn't even have. You know, if he tells you the kind of interrogation was subjected to, it has absolutely nothing to do with the charge that has been preferred to him. This is actually a very convenient charge by the police trying to shield themselves from an embarrassment because we've been trying to trail the police in this investigation for the last two weeks, like has been explained. And we were told nothing. They didn't charge him. They only obtained originally an ordinary statement and deposited him in custody. Today, because we presented the writ of habeas corpus to them and the attorney general was served, we were in court in the morning at eight hours. To our rude shock, they did not bring him to court. When a writ of habeas corpus has been issued against the state, their responsibility as police is to bring the subject, which is Thompson Peary, to police on the date that is mentioned in the habeas corpus. But today we appeared in court at eight hours and the police had the audacity not to show up at court. The lawyers who came from Attorney General's chambers, they said, came and applied for an adjournment. We tried to persuade the judge to agree with us that in habeas corpus, you don't adjourn matters. It's either you bring the individual or you co commit contempt of court. But of course, the court, in its own wisdom, decided to adjourn the matter. And we were supposed now to go back to court on, the, on Monday next week. That's when they, it was suggested by the court that Thompson was going to be presented in court. But lo and behold, because now they know they've been caught nappy, that's when they facilitated all these processes of having him released. They, you know, the charge that they preferred against him has absolutely nothing to do with the interrogation that they carried out against him. Now, <clears throat> we were told, like Leader of Opposition has said, that the president had declared that this country was going to be governed according to the rule of law. And the president himself made pronouncements not once, but about five times, that if somebody is arrested, they're not going to spend more than 48 hours in custody. In fact, the president was saying, investigate first, then arrest an individual then keep him in custody for about a year and let him be presented to court. That is what the rule of law suggests. But I've said this repeatedly, that when it has to do with people that are patriotic front or people who are associated with the patriotic front, there is no rule of law in this country. Because that's the only explanation can give of why Thompson had to spend 13 days behind bars without any charge being preferred against him. And he's being interrogated within the, in the absence of his lawyers. That is a breakdown in the rule of law. But I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, uh, members of a patriotic front will remain resolute. This is a war against democracy. Yes. This is a war against the rule of law. Because our friends are intent and in, at ensuring that the patriotic front is decimated, that we don't exist beyond December. But I've always said this, that PF is not only a political party. This is a movement of people that know what they are looking for in the nation. You know, I mean, the case that we've got with, uh, with Thompson here today has nothing to do with breaking the law. The only reason why Thompson found himself behind bars is because some of the UPND cadres were unhappy with the blogging that he was doing. Thompson was bringing about facts about what's going on in the country. 
in terms of corruption, in terms of you know, nepotism, in terms of tribalism, and everything else that was going on. He was a subject of warnings from UPND cutters on various blogs on which he operates. They warned him and they threatened him and they told him they were going to report him to the police. And he found himself here reported because an individual who was unhappy with him presented a fake story to the police and they picked him up. So wherever they are, the UPND cutters are very excited that what they intended to achieve has been achieved. This is abuse of the police by the party which is, which is in power. Yeah. And I'm hoping that Zambians can begin to see this. You see, the misfortune that we have is people think that members of the Patriotic Front deserve what they are going through. This has nothing to do with the PM. This has everything to do with the civil liberties in the country. This has everything to do with the freedom that people are supposed to enjoy by virtue of being citizens of this country. This country continues to be divided on these kinds of lines. You know, Ruzan Patel was arrested and was dragged all the way from Petauke to Lusaka. Are there, are there no police stations in Petauke? The individual committed an offense allegedly in Petauke itself. They should have arrested him, they should have investigated him in an area where he can have access to his family members. You know, not where you pick up a citizen and drive him by the night to a place where he has no relatives, and now we don't even know where he is. As we finish dealing with Thompson Peter's case here, we now have to start a rat race like we did previously, you know, to try and find out where they've taken Rizan Patel, because we have no idea. His family members have been calling me. They want to find out exactly where their, their, their relative is. I also do not know. I'm hopeful that I can find him in all of these police stations like we did with Honorable Mwamba. We were all over the place from about 14 hours to 22 hours. That's when we were told is a time as the police. We are hopeful that we can try and locate Rizan as soon as possible. And there's also been stories that he's been, uh, he's been assaulted, he's been tortured by the police. His elder brother called me just a while ago and explained to me that he, when he saw him for about five minutes, he saw that his younger brother had been assaulted. You know, and I think this is why maybe the police are going to hide him from us. But we are determined. We will make sure that at least we, we locate him and we deal with the matter in accordance with the responsibility that we have towards clients who are being you know, abused by the police. But we need to stand up as a nation against torture. We need to stand up as a nation against abuse of the police. Mr. Mwemba's case was a very clear case where evidence is all laid bare. This young man's case, I came to see him about two weeks ago after he was arrested. He wasn't looking the way he's looking. In fact, it's only his strength. And I think, like I told him, his innocence, that has kept him standing. He has been subjected to all manner of atrocities. If he really was a person who could break down very easy, we're not going to find Thompson in this state that we found him here today. This shows a resilient human being. This shows an individual who says, no matter what you're going to do, I'm not going to give you, one, the information that you want because I don't have it. And secondly, I'm not going to break down under any amount of torture. We used to see him, and I want to thank the Central Committee members who have been here. They've kept vigil for the past two weeks. I want to thank all the youths for the Patriotic Front and even other concerned Zambian youths who've been voicing concern about Thompson's you know, atrocities. This is how Zambians must stand. We should always stand with the somebody who's being victimized. Central Committee members, I'm so grateful. You make this easy work look very easy even for us as lawyers. You know, there are times when we reach our limitations, but when you know that you are being assisted or supported by your colleagues in the team, it becomes easier for you to fight on. Please continue, and let's not stop on, only on Thompson. We've got Rizan Patel, who has unfortunately been arrested in similar circumstances by Thompson. If we don't gang up around him, he will also spend another 14 days in custody. I'm hoping we can continue working together to ensure that the young man also is released and he goes back home. These people have not done anything wrong. If it is those statements that are talking about, you know, wanting to contain the Catholics, what we are going through now is a justification of the fact that maybe there's something of substance in those documents. That's right. Why is the police abusing innocent citizens if the government has said those documents were fake? Yeah. Why do you arrest somebody and keep him in custody for two weeks on a fake, a fake document? document. Yeah. Why do you go and pick up a citizen in Petau and bring him all the way here? In pursuit of a document that you have said I've recanted, you said, look, we don't, this can't be justified. For me, it, you know, there's no smoke without fire. There's, yeah, no, there's something documents. wrong that has happened. That it is true that the Catholic Church is under threat by this government. Yeah. It is true that there are schemes to, you know, to reduce the, the, the influence of the Catholic Church in the political spectrum. The Catholic Church is not a political party. Their adversary must be the patriotic front, and we must have a contest of ideas, not this abuse that we are seeing. You know, where our leadership are being abused, they don't want us to be on social media. That's what they targeted Imanu Mam, because Imanu Mamba is our voice on the social media. We can't use their television because they have, they have nationalized TV. You know, even the private TV stations, the others don't even want to cover it because they are afraid. So the only alternative we've got is a brave journalist like Imanu Mamba, who's got his own team that makes us available on the social media so that people can know what is going on in the country. We will not stop. We will soldier on in doing this. And members of PF, I'm just urging you, especially the youths, 
I saw how you came out in support of your friend Thompson. Yeah. And some of you were even issuing threats to us. We, we love those threats. Because when you threaten us, then we will stand up and work. You know, that's how democracy is supposed to work. Yes, we must be able to show you that we stand up with you. And that's why we were able, look, we were supposed to be in the parliament right now. We are discussing very serious business in Parliament, mm. but we can't continue being in Parliament when our party is being destroyed, yeah, yeah. you know, by somebody who is determined to destroy this political mm. party. We will combine the roles. We will sit in Parliament because we are elected members of Parliament. I've got 65,000 people that are representing Nukasha constituents, mm. but those 65,000 people are just as important to me as Thompson's liberty is, yeah. because this is a country where we're supposed to have freedoms and liberties. And mm. if, if anybody's wrong is going to be abused, we will stand with such a person. So if they want us, we are so determined, we'll go all the way up to the end. They just need to start doing what is right. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to question them. And Thompson, don't stop questioning them. No. Yeah. Believe it or not, don't stop questioning the status quo. If something is wrong, we as citizens, we must call out leadership. Exactly. Even if they're going yeah. to threaten us and lie about whatever they're going to do to us, we're not going to do that. We'll, we'll stand here in support of you. You can see members of the Central Committee who, are, who have come here. They've been here with you for the past so many days. Today, all of them were here from eight hours. When I came twice here, we were not around, but they were determined to make sure that when you come back, you find them here. So be strong, young man. This is what it means to return liberties in the countries when they are going to be you know, reduced. You, you, are, you are an example to so many people there. You know? And all those who are blogging, please don't be scared. Believe it or not, lies have got short legs. At the end of the day, people will know the truth about what happened to Thompson, what has happened to Ruzani, what happened to Emmanuel, what happened to Luchi. Everybody will know. But for us, we are determined to give this government credible checks and balances. And we are doing it in Parliament. We have been doing it outside Parliament. That's why we came to stand here. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much. So, so, so Thompson, members of Parliament are on the way. Maybe we may intercept them. Yes. Go and meet them where is one is. That's right. Yeah, so, so, so I'll, of I'll, I'll pass through Kawata. That's in case of Putin at Kawata. Okay. It's possible, so, yes. So uh -huh. If there are any that are coming there, they also should check at uh, Long Lake. Oh, yeah, okay. oh. yeah, she needs to say. Banana Ponde. <laughs> MCC, say something. This is very, very important. Thank you very much, countrymen and women. I'm standing here as a mother and I'm very, very agitated. You know, the rule of law. According to him, HH, as the president, before he ascended to, into power, he said he, has go, he was going to rule this country according to the rule of law. Now it's not the case. It's not fair. As, as mothers, I'm speaking as a mother, this Thompson is a youth, and there's no way you can take somebody's child to come and detain them to be God's God of the many people or whoever wronged him to come and keep somebody's child for over 10 days in behind the bars, which is not right. According to the philosopher of political, the philosopher Aristotle said, no man should suffer in harm or in good for the case they did not do. And this is was his case. Why is he suffering for the case that he did not do? We are very, very upset as mothers. Me as a member of Central Committee, I'm going to fight this. Whoever is being caught without a case, I'll be there for them. And I'm going to be the voice as a woman. Wow, wow, because wow. according to the law of law, this is our country and we've got human rights. And if the human rights are not ready to speak on behalf of PF, we as human beings, because from our birth, we were given the right as human beings. So we are going to voice our voices, to speak on behalf of our husbands, our children, and also our sisters who are yet to be incarcerated. We know what they're planning. Whoever is going to be picked without the law, we are going to be there and we'll stand with them. So they should just know. UPND came into power using the same youths and they were blogging. For them, it was even worse because they were even insulting. How many times was our former president insulted? In public, he was undressed, everything. But never, ever, not even a single day, did we hear that a youth has been picked, has been incarcerated for over 10 days? It never happened. Why is it happening? When they said we, were, we used to do bad things, and why are they repeating the same bad things we used to do? Even worse. Even worse to torture our youths, to torture our brothers, to torture our husband. That we are not going to allow it. We are not going to allow it. Thank you very much.